Hello, Legion. It's Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play Civilization VI Rise and Fall. It's been a while. In more ways than one, we have so much to catch up on, but I'm going to get to that once we are underway here with the series. I'm going to take just a second, as I always do, to go over the game setup and the modded leader that we're featuring for the series. So if you want to jump straight to gameplay and past all the introductory stuff, there is a timestamp on your screen. Feel free to do that, and I will see you in a second. As for the rest of you, now that Gathering Storm has been announced, and I'm going to go off the rails from my script already here, if you have not seen this, if you have not looked, I'll give you a link in the description below, if you have not looked at the announcement and blog posts and the videos for the initial announcement of Gathering Storm, this is the second expansion pack coming in February of 2019 for Civilization VI. Earlier this year, those of you who follow me on Twitter might remember that I kind of made a tongue-in-cheek joke about, well, not really a joke, I was serious, but I was, I was being snarky about it, that, you know, the developers for Civilization VI, the, the key players like Ed Beach, Anton Stringer, they've been quiet for a while. And, you know, we've had quiet periods before leading up to the release of seasonal patches, but this one's, you know, we haven't heard about a seasonal patch in a bit. And this one's, it's, it feels like a long silence. And then, of course, we got the, the Switch announcement, and some people were like, oh, that's what they were working on. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's not the way this works. You don't take an entire development team and have them suddenly work on a console version of a game. You have a partition of the development team that does that. And the rest of the development team, I guarantee you, is working on something and working on something that I would say is big based on how long this silence has lasted. That was my prediction. And I am not trying to boast. I'm just saying I'm very, very, very happy to be able to say that that prediction came true because this expansion is holy crap massive. It is, it's adding back the World Congress. It's adding climate change effects. It's adding weather effects like hurricanes that can sink your ships. It's adding engineering projects like you can actually build canals and canal districts. The Panama Canal will be a wonder in the game. It's adding new units, new leaders, new, oh my gosh, new civilizations. It's so much. I'm still taking it all in and it's, it's going to be a second before I can really get my head around all the stuff that's being added in this expansion pack. I don't know if this will be the final expansion pack. Chances are it will be based on how much content is being added. They usually do two expansions for Civ and then like clockwork begin preparing for the next game. But uh, it's pretty exciting stuff now that the second expansion pack has been announced because it really is fleshing out the game and adding even more than we already have had. So we'll talk more about that and uh, just about so many things that, like I said, we have to catch up on once the episode gets going. This series, if you haven't noticed, is going to be called Glory of Rome 2. If you didn't see the first one, the basics are as follows. There's this guy named Sucretect. He makes really great Civilization VI mods. These mods include some of the only, if not the only, animated and voiced leaders created by the modding community. His first leader was Hadrian way back in the day, I think his first. And the original Glory of Rome series that I did on this channel featured that leader all the way back then. So now that Sucretact is about to release a much anticipated update to, well, yours truly, I guess, it's time for Glory of Rome 2. And it's really great. I just have to say about Sucretact, this is a fantastic guy. He works really hard. He's got a lot of passion for what he does. He's a great artist. And like I said, he's one of the only, he might be the only, again, um, modders that's actually doing voiced and animated leaders. And those of you who have used his mods, whether you've used his leaders, his interface mods, or his natural wonders mods, know that his talents have been improving. Like fine wine, they've aged, they've gotten better. And so with Hadrian being the first leader that he did, it was time for him to go back and say, hey, this is Rome. This is an alternate leader. This is Trajan's adopted son. Uh, we really need to make sure that this is up to snuff with the rest of my work. And he did it. And there are a few changes uh, in addition to the visual, the visual update and also the, uh, the voice acting update. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, there are some updates to the actual gameplay side as well, which I'll go over in just a second. The mod is not quite finished yet as of the moment I am saying these words into this microphone, but it's close. So when the mod goes live, you will be able to find the link in the description below, along with the rest of the mods I'm using for the series. If you don't see the link yet, it's probably not out yet. There are ways to download the beta if you go to his Patreon page, so I'll probably link that in the description, but uh, just keep an eye out for the full release and I'll link it as soon as I can. So again, I'll chat about the details of the new bonuses to Hadrian in just a second, and I'll chat about the other mods I'm using in a few minutes. But it's been a long time since we played, and I've almost been talking for five minutes, and I don't want to keep you waiting. So for now, let's just go over the game settings and get started with this new series. We are playing on a Terra map, which is in the yet not on the map pack, mod pack, which, by the way, we are using a smaller cocktail of mods than we did the first time. Those of you who might remember Glory of Rome from the first time around, we used a ton of mods. There's still a long list, longer than I typically use, but we've taken a few things out, 
and we've changed a few things. We're not playing on a real world map this time. I wanted to kind of mix things up a little bit. So like I said, we're playing on a Terra map, which is part of yet not another map pack. Let me see if I can say that. Yet not another map pack. Yeah, there we go. That mod, really, really popular map pack mod for Civilization VI. And the Terra script is a very nice way to generate random worlds based on different scripts that you want to set for different parts of the world. So you can set up a two continent script, which is what I've done here, and then say what type of landmass you want each continent to be. It's actually not even two continents. It's called a two script setup. And then you say which kind of landmass you want each script to generate. So we have a starting continent with every single civilization in the game. As you can see on the side there, there are 11 other civilizations currently in the game with me. And there are 24 city-states. Some of the city-states are going to be on the New World, the other continent, but none of the other civilizations are. So that is truly the New World, and it's up to us to colonize it and reap the rewards of the New World ahead of the rest of the civilizations in the game. Pretty exciting stuff. We are also playing on abundant resources, so there won't necessarily be a fight. It, we won't feel, um, I don't think, unless we get very unlucky with our start here, and it doesn't look like, from what I'm seeing on my screen, it doesn't look like we have an unlucky start. But we probably won't be a very meager nation. We'll have plenty of resources because of the abundance setting. But still, whoever can really get out there and take advantage of you know, the most map space will still be the most dominant player, as usual. We are playing on Emperor difficulty. I usually play on King on the channel. But as you guys know, I've played a lot of King difficulty, both on and off YouTube. I do enjoy the a good balance between uh, challenge and casual play. I don't like for the AI bonuses to be too ridiculous. Like for instance, once you pass King difficulty, the AI starts to get extra settlers, but I'm running a mod that except on, de on deity difficulty takes that extra settler away. So we are playing on emperor difficulty just to kind of ease ourselves back into a nice challenging playthrough of Civilization VI, but no extra settlers. The AI will get the other bonuses production wise and research wise that they always do, but no bonus cities for them. Take that. So we also, just as a note on the uh, map stuff, we are playing with cultural start enabled. So as I mentioned, there are a couple of things to do with the way that this script is generated. I have set up all of the civs to be on this continent with us, but also I have selected, I have pre-selected every civilization in the game. So it's only old world leaders. And secondly, the other thing is that I have set it up to have cultural start links, which means that even though we're not playing on a map that resembles the real world, the civilizations that are closest to us will still be those that are closest to us in the actual world. So the civilizations that were closest to Rome will tend to be closest to us on this map. So we might run into, say, Macedon pretty early. We might run into Nubia pretty early or Egypt because those are in the Mediterranean area, of course. So that's it for the game setup. Let's talk a little bit about Hadrian now. This is, of course, Rome. Rome still has all of its basic uniques, so it has the civilization ability that all roads lead to Rome, and you guys have seen that before. There's nothing different with this particular modification. So any roads or any uh, cities that we conquer, any cities that we build, as long as they are within range of... Well, they all get a trading post, but as long as they are within range of the capital, they will also get a road automatically built to them. But also we have the Legion and the Bath unique unit and unique district and the bath also has an icon that is modded in this particular playthrough uh, which is going to be um, just going to make it a little bit easier to distinguish from the aqueduct it's just a small visual thing that i like to throw and i did it with the original glory of rome as well and then finally hadrian's leader ability is greculus or greculus depending on how you want to read it and what Sucretact is done with this. He's buffed Hadrian slightly, but it's 50% extra production towards the first buildings of the Encampment, Theater Square, Campus, and Holy Side Districts. And these buildings also, when you finish them, will have double their normal yields. So that's something that I'll try and play to as much as I can through the series. Also, Cities with a Wonder may build an additional district. So you guys know I'm a little bit wonder happy in Civilization VI. Even on higher difficulty, I like to try and get my wonders in. So that's one thing that I'm going to try and do. Either build some wonders or take some cities with some wonders so we can take advantage of that extra district, district rule. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump in to the game here. We are looking at... looks like we've started on an olives tile. So once we have irrigation, we're actually going to get a pretty nice bonus as a result of that. And also because we've started on an olives tile, we're going to get a gold bonus as well, which is a nice start. We also have rice right next to us. So Rome is not going to have a hard time growing or building for that matter. Thanks to the stone nearby. We have uh, two cotton within range without having done any exploration. And we also have, looks like another olives patch 
just two tiles away. So we're going to have the ability to trade two luxury resources within range of our first city. It's going to take a while for for the uh, for Rome's borders to grow all the way out here. But still, it's a nice start in terms of our resources. And we have Jade over here as well. So I'm going to take a quick look at the other tiles we have nearby. I don't think I'm going to move my settler. That seems like a pretty decent spot. I like that we've got a river protecting us here and a mountain protecting us there and the woods protecting us there. It's a pretty defensible city position. By the way, you can go back to where I had the game information up earlier and you can take a look at... Let's go ahead and pull this stuff down. Uh, you can take a look at the game seed if you want to play on this exact map using the yet not another map pack mod. But let's... um. I'm going to go ahead and send the warrior across here because I want to see... Okay. Not a lot in that direction. I was kind of hoping there might be Plains Hills there, but like I said, I'm not going to move my settler, so we're not going to worry about that. Let's go ahead and found Rome. And our first technology decision is going to be astrology. I would like to go for a religion as soon as possible, so let's do that. And what else can we do? Mm. Yep, let's go for a scout first. Looks like it's going to take five turns for our first population growth and four turns to build the scout. What if I change things slightly? Now I'd rather have the scout sooner, so we'll just keep the focuses off and um, go to the next turn. Don't see any indication of there being any city-states or other players nearby just yet. I think I mentioned that we're playing on an enormous map. So we have a good bit of room... I only have 12 players, but the enormous map size is built for 16, so there's a little bit of breathing room on this continent, but it should still be pretty close quarters in terms of just the amount of conflict we might see early on in the series. Let's see, why don't we put you on top of that mountain so you can get some extra visibility. There we go. Uh, we've got sheep here, we've got um, incense there. Two turns until the scout's done. Can't really tell if there's a mountain range nearby. I don't have a sense of the geography yet. Oh, hello. All right, you come over this way. And that's partly just part of the process for getting back up to Rome because it looks like a barbarian has already discovered us. Yay. All right, we are making 6.2 gold per turn. No faith per turn at the moment. Which sometimes you can get lucky and start out with faith per turn. But not today. All right, let's go ahead and hop over here. No real new visibility there. Scout's done. We are, of course, using... I'll go over the mods in more detail in just a second, but I wanted to get into some gameplay. But we are using the um, uh, improved Scout mod. I don't. What's the exact name of it? Is it... Um, yeah, Scout Ranger Plus. It's been around for a while. We've used it in several series. Just makes Scouts a little bit more survivable by giving them extra movement and a bonus promotion to start out. So let's see. I think I'm going to send this Scout that way. And we're going to give them the ability to move faster in woods and rainforest. Because I see a good amount of that in the area. Okay, so I think what I want to go for next... We can't quite do a settler yet until one more turn has passed. I think I just want to go ahead and build a monument so we can have more culture per turn. And start researching our civics a little bit faster. We have nine turns, unless we find a natural wonder, which hopefully we will, until astrology is finished. We have six turns until Code of Laws is finished. Of course, Code of Laws will give us some combat bonuses that might help us if we have barbarians coming to see us early on. Okay, so no goody huts nearby. That makes me slightly sad. Hello! I'm just expecting him to say the word Malacca at this point. <sighs> it is an honor to meet you, Pericles. Pericles. We would, honor, we would love to sample your hospitality. Your knowledge of writing has advanced considerably. Very nice. So we got that boost. And of course, we've met a new civilization, which gave us one point of era score. You have met Pericles of the Greek Empire down here. Pretty close. Not necessarily a huge fan of that. No, it doesn't look like... Yeah, that was part of that warrior's move, so that was at the end of the turn. I momentarily forgot that that happened on our turn. I thought he might have come to see us, but no, that's not what happened. Tell you what, let me step to this hilltop. Aha! Having discovered another continent, we realize there is a wide world of trading opportunities. Let's take a quick look at the continent's map. So we have started... Oh, hey! We are very near the continent of Britannia, and we have started on the continent of Laurentia. 
and we've discovered the continent of Mu. So three continents already to start us off. Interesting. And we've met Muscat, but very importantly, we are not the first to meet Muscat, which makes me sad because I could have, I really would have liked to have had the extra gold. But I'll go ahead and step up one tile closer, and maybe if we step across, we'll run into whoever it is on this side of them that uh, has already encountered them. All right, so the foreign trade boost. Wait, where did that come from? Oh, from discovering a second continent. Of course. Okay, so they've given us a new quest. We have to trigger an inspiration for state workforce. We'll get an extra envoy with them. So we have to build any specialty district. And that will probably be doable because we are going to build a holy site district in Rome fairly soon. All right, let me have my warrior jump across the river here because he's going to have to come back to Rome and defend pretty soon. Moving into turn eight. I'll have you step this direction just to see. Okay, that's... Is that a different scout? I feel like if it was the same scout, we would see the exclamation point. So I don't know if that's the same scout that discovered my city or not. Slightly nervous now. I'm not going to cross the river just yet. I had the ability to move through that wooden terrain with the scout, thanks to its promotion. So we'll leave you there. Oh, it is an honor to meet you, Cyrus of Persia. Okay, so with that being done, hang on. Oh. Oh, it's still cycling the turn. Didn't realize that. Let's send a delegation. The people happily received your delegation and gifts. Thank you. All right, now can we send a delegation to Cyrus? We decline. Of course not. We just met him. That never happens in the current version of Civ 6. All right, we have another barbarian scout, which is not good. There's a barbarian horseman here. I think probably the smartest thing to do... See, if I move the warrior here, I will at the very least be able to get a better idea of how many units are on the way. But the problem is, with that marsh being in the way, I would kind of trap my warrior, and that horseman would be able to run all over him. So what I'm going to do instead is head back this way. And when can we purchase a slinger? 90 gold? Uh, might, might hold out until I have to purchase the slinger, but we'll do that as soon as we can. All right, so here's uh, Pasargadai the capital of Persia. So we're kind of sandwiched between Greece and Persia. Slightly different geographically. Again, the civilizations will be in this playthrough, they'll be in they'll be close to us relative to how close they were in the ancient world, but in on the real world map, but they won't necessarily be positioned similarly. So in case you were wondering about that. Another new continent? Really? Labradoria? Alright, we have discovered the continent of Labradors. Oh, okay. Let's go to the next turn. We're going to have that horseman, I would imagine, charging straight for us in just a second. Yep. At his best, Here we go. The man is the noblest of all animals. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst. One does not, one simply does not interrupt. No, no, no. One does not simply interrupt. Oh my God, butchering the line. One does not simply interrupt, Sean Bean. So, let's see. Plus five, combat strength when fighting barbarians. We're going to need that. We're playing on Emperor difficulty. They're getting a decent combat bonus. Let's also go ahead and... See, I want to do the production bonus, but we don't have any source of faith yet, and I really want to get a Pantheon as soon as possible. So let's do the extra gold and faith. That'll also help us get to our scout a little bit sooner. Now, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to have this warrior hang out here for now. This is a second scout that's just found us, so we're going to have barbarians attacking us from two different directions. Isn't this a fun start? Mm, let's go ahead and go for craftsmanship because I would like to have military tradition and flanking and support combat bonuses as soon as I can get them. Three turns away from another population in Rome. And three turns away from our monument finishing up. Which will help craftsmanship finish a lot faster. Like, a lot faster. Can't wait for that to be done. All right, I was kind of hoping the scout would discover a barbarian encampment that close, but no such luck. Interesting, I see some Persian units heading this way. They might try and declare on us early on. All right. The horsemen have arrived, but they attacked across the river, which was not smart. Because we were actually able to do a good amount of damage to them, and we can now hit them back. 
without taking too much damage. As you can see, we are playing with the RED mod, mod pack. And I'll take a second to go over the mods really quickly now that we've been playing for a second, just so you kind of know what we have on the agenda in that regard. So for the mods, we have more Barbarian XP, as you might have already noticed from the XP we're gaining from these fights. We have Scout Ranger Plus, and those are two mods that I use quite often, regardless of how many or how few mods I'm using in a series. We have Free Walls for City-States, which makes it a little bit harder for the aggressive AI on harder difficulties like Emperor to conquer City-States early on. They'll still do it, but it's harder for them to do. We have Combat and Gossip Log, which I'll take another look at in just a second uh, once I get this mod list off the screen. But you probably saw it for the part of the episode we've been playing so far. It is a really nice mod that I just discovered this morning before getting this series started. So I was happy to see that that's been added and I hope that it continues to be a staple in the modding community because I feel like having a log of recent combat actions and gossip is a really handy thing that should have been part of the interface really all along, I believe. So we have that. We have Tomatex Historical Religions, of course. Less unit XP required, so units in general of this game are going to level up faster. We are playing on quick speed too, so we should have, by the end of the game, a number of fairly strong units, which makes warfare a little bit more fun, a little bit more frantic. And then also we have more lenses, better trade screen. We also have uh, the Free Settler on DD only uh, mod, which I mentioned already. We have Extended Diplomacy Ribbon. We have the RED map pack. This is the reason that I wanted to uh, stop and talk about the mods really quickly. Obviously, the units are all smaller and they exist in larger packs. And of course, we have city roads, gold resources, uh, closer cities, which allows me to found cities a little bit closer than four tiles away. Smaller map blip. So these dots are smaller down here. And then uh, my Cliffs of Dover yield mod. In case the Cliffs of Dover natural wonder is on this map somewhere, that will change things slightly. So hopefully that filled in a few blanks for you guys. But let's take a second now okay now we're seeing hey uh, there's a goodie hut down there I'm gonna have to grab that before Greece does I don't know if I'll be able to though because there's a lot of units that are capable of, capable of intercepting that scout beforehand a little bit nervous about what's gonna happen once that scout reports back we definitely have our work cut out for us hey Gorgoemi, yeah, so we have both Greek factions. We don't have Trajan in the game. It's just because I didn't want there to be two Romes. I thought that would be weird. But the Greek factions have different starting capitals. They have Athens and they have Sparta. So would you like to visit our nearby city and sample our hospitality? So we're kind of being nice to Sparta there. Sparta's somewhere over here, I suppose. I just, I don't want to have another enemy this early on. I feel like Persia is probably going to attack and we have two barbarian encampments. So I've got my work cut out for me. Thanks. All right. Looks like Sparta did take care of that barbarian horseman though. A physician Appreciate that. Without a knowledge of astrology has no right to call himself a physician. Okay. So now we can build the holy site district. Let's go ahead and promote our warrior. Give them extra combat strength versus melee and ranged. Research-wise, I'm going to go ahead and go for pottery and writing so we can have access to the campus district as soon as possible. It's a fairly common first move for me. You might have seen me do it on the channel before. Uh, yeah, I think I'm liking that spot for the holy site. Let's go ahead and throw it down. And then also, oh yeah, because I bought that, it's going to take me another second before I can purchase the slinger. That's not an issue. I don't think we're under imminent threat. And I think we'll be able to get that. Oh no, we don't have the hills movement promotion, so it's going to take two turns before we can get to that goody hut. Hopefully Athens won't beat us to it. Although I have to say I have a feeling they will. Okay, so... I guess I'm just going to keep the warrior here in case Rome needs to be defended. We're trying to get some early infrastructure work done. Yeah, Sparta already is not approving of me. Yes, by all means, make each other's lives difficult. I appreciate that very much. All right, let's go ahead and get this goody hut. Nice, another scout. I was kind of hoping for something like that. Let's go ahead and move this scout up this direction, and we're going to give them the same promotion. Movement for woods or rainforest. We're going to keep that unit fortified right there. I think we can go ahead, nope, one more turn, and we can buy that slinger. Not really near any mountain ranges that I can see. There might be one up here. 
We've got this one down here a little bit. That's one thing they've changed in Gathering Storm. Continents are going to be better separated by mountain ranges when they run together, as you would expect geographically from just tectonic action. Um, so I was very excited to see that, for sure. But, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and kill the horseman unit. Good night. I might switch to quick combat later in the series, but for now I enjoy watching the fighting, especially with the RED uh, unit packs. All right, nice. We've encountered the religious city-state of Jerusalem, so we've met Muscat and Jerusalem so far. And they have a quest for us, too. What do they have? Trigger a Eureka for masonry. Build a quarry. That is very doable. First, let's go ahead and buy our slinger. All set. And next turn, please. Mm, I won't necessarily be doing that for long, Pericles, but thanks for the compliment. He now sees us as uh, his buddies, which is good. All right, so our scout's being attacked here, but that's that's actually good. No man ever wetted clay and then left it, as if there would be bricks by chance and fortune. All right, so now we can build the granary, and I'm going to go ahead and attack this unit with the scout, give them some experience. And that, as they say, is that. In your face. Very nice. All right, so I'm going to keep the slinger right there in Rome. We'll have the warrior wander out a little bit. Before too much long, it'll be the next episode most likely, but we'll have uh, the legions at our disposal. All right, I still don't know what's going on with this encampment down here, which is part of the reason I'm keeping that slinger in place. But let's see. We are now on the way to riding. We already have the boost for it, so that's six turns away. It would be nice to have the science boost as soon as possible. We've sent, sent you a delegation bearing gifts. Don't be alarmed. There's no large wooden horse involved. Your delegation is most welcome. That's some free gold. I'll take it. So here's the gossip log in action. All right, so it looks like the Greeks picked up God of the Forge. Okay, so we do have some mountains up here. It's really kind of a wide open. I'm not liking it. Like, I might try and get a city down here in this direction if we can protect the settler from these barbarians. Just to have something a little bit closer to these mountains and to cut Greece off from accessing them and having a monopoly over potentially good uh, science territory. I mean, it is Greece, so you expect them to do well with science. But this is an alternate universe. Not necessarily Greece. All right, so let's, hmm, let's declare a friendship with Greece. And then also, we are using the Extended Diplomacy Ribbon, which I can't recall if that was on my mod list or not, but it is in... Yeah, it was. I just forgot to mention it. Or maybe I did and I forgot that I mentioned it. But, <laughs> uh, we... I haven't done this in a while. It's been a second. Channel's been on hibernation. Give me a break. But, we are able to look at our information up here as far as what the other civilizations think of us, when they're willing to make peace, what they're willing to trade, etc. So... So far, Pericles is quite happy with us. We don't know why Sparta is unhappy with us. Um, and then Cyrus, we know nothing about. Speaking of the devil. I don't know why I say speaking of the devil. The phrase is speak of the devil, but you know what I mean. So, almost done with the holy site here. And then we'll get the shrine built and then we'll be well on our way to a religion. And gives as many useful objects, such as wickerwork picnic baskets. <laughs> Very important, those things. Um, we do not have our first Pantheon yet, so I'm going to keep everything as is. Although, with the... Now that we have um, Faith per Turn building up, I think maybe I will keep this for one more civics research cycle. But we'll probably switch to something other than that policy next. Alright, so now let's go for... I don't know, do I want to go for foreign trade or military tradition? Let's go ahead and go for military tradition in case in nine turns our reality has changed and we are dealing with a lot of crap. Because that is highly likely. There's the encampment I was looking for. And some horses too, so we need to try and get over there. That might have just become my number one priority. See, I really want to do a second settler right now. But I want to get a shrine so that I can have a religion sooner. The great profit points are going to be important. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get out there and kill this encampment. 
while there's not a scout spawning units from it. I feel like that's a good idea. Almost been playing for 30 minutes, so I'll go a few more minutes before we end this first episode, but I don't want to go too long. Ah, dang it. Seriously? Alright, so they have, it seems like, spawned a um, horseman unit out there. Saw that. Oh, we're about to get the boost for archery. Lucky, lucky. That was incredibly stupid of that scout to do. We've now killed a unit with a slinger, which gives us the boost for archery. And our knowledge of bronze working has improved considerably. Okay, I'm going to still try, maybe, uh, to, to fight these guys. If I'm just clever with my moves, I might still do well. Famous last words, I know. Hello. That is a city-state. Looks like a religious city-state. Not sure who. We'll find out soon. Ah, Spartan delegation. They must be under pressure from someone else if they are... Are they trying to trade with me? Oh man, is that two horsemen units? Yes, it is. They must be under some kind of military pressure if they are suddenly trying to make nice. Because that's Sparta. They don't have to be nice. Tell you what, I'm going to fortify until healed because if both of these units start attacking me, I'll get the experience and I might be able to level the warrior up. At which point I might stand a better chance of actually killing both of them and then taking out the encampment. So like I said, we're going to try and be, be a little cheeky with our units here. All right, more horses in this area, more reasons to head that direction. Okay, Slinger's not quite ready to level up yet. Okay, so that's most of their unit. Only one, no, a couple of horses left there. And there's a promotion available. I'm kind of worried these spearmen are going to come out and slaughter me. That's part of the reason I think they moved those horsemen there. No, they didn't. Okay, well, now we get to heal our warrior. Now, the question is, do I want to give them the movement promotion now or the tortoise promotion now? I think I'd rather give them the movement promotion. They're still going to be getting lots of experience from finishing this up. So, all right, for my Pantheon, I think... Let's take a quick look. We've got some new options that came out with Rise and Fall, right? Or was this Rise and Fall or was this the spring? It might have been the spring update or, or summer update. There wasn't a summer update, was there? Spring update was the last one. Like I said, they went quiet for a long time and then they announced the expansion. I was like, aha! But, um... City Patron Goddess. So, basically, every first district gets a production bonus. Very similar to Hadrian's existing bonus for the first building in each district of certain types. But this would apply to all specialty districts. Fertility rights makes city growth rate better. Border expansion is faster with religious settlements. Let's see, extra culture from pastures, food from camps, faith from quarries. Now we are going to have a number of quarries. If we, especially if we um, settle these two areas, we're going to have all these. So that's going to produce a good amount of extra faith. That's worth thinking about. But we also already are working towards having a religion. So we're going to have a number of holy sites and hopefully holy sites near mountains. So that might not be too necessary. Plus two faith from mines over luxury and bonus resources. Nah. We aren't near any marsh, oasis, or floodplains tiles to speak of, really. I think I am going to go for Divine Spark. This is an extra great person point from the holy site, campus, or theater square districts. Makes it a little bit easier to stay on top of the great person game. All right, so our progress towards mysticism has advanced considerably. Have we... All right, we did get a bonus envoy with Muscat as a result of fulfilling their quest, which is nice. Let's make a few more moves here. Go to turn uh, 25, maybe. How about that? Nice! We have encountered Hattusa, and our progress towards political philosophy has advanced considerably because we met three city-states. Just kidding, four. All right, so now we've met Yerevan, and we do have some new quests. Send a trade route to Hattusa. Oh, God, that's a long ways away. And send a trade route to Yerevan. That's slightly more doable because it goes by Athens. Oh, Gorgo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You threw your spear. You're angry. I get it. Are you going to pick your spear up? Okay, you pick your spear up. You're good. One turn away from finishing riding. Oh, crap. Is that a new horseman unit or the same one? Right, that's the same easy. one. Okay. All you have to do is cross out the wrong words. 
Thank you for that, Mark Twain. All right, so now we've finished that. Uh, animal husbandry or mining? That's the question. I think mining. Yeah, we have a lot more mining related stuff going on nearby so let's do that plus that'll open up some of the military technologies we're gonna have access to soon i think i will go ahead and eliminate these horsemen while i can and then come back for the others oh there is another horseman unit in the area i wasn't wrong okay well i'm glad i made that move then all right this is going to be a little tough but we need to whittle down their horseman numbers before they're too much of a threat all right, let's see. Let's go ahead and have you cross here. There we go. Lots of uncovered territory. Again, we're playing with the Scout Ranger Plus mod, so it's giving us a little bit more visibility from the scouts in addition to the movement perks. Makes them just a little bit more survivable. They don't have any extra combat strength. Scouts are just so easy to kill early on in Civ 6. It's a pain. Okay, that was rough. I'm guessing these guys are going to come and attack as well. Yep. Now, the upshot of what just happened is that... Okay, there might not be much of an upshot. We might have to get the heck away. We did have the movement bonus applied. Yeah, I think the smart thing to do is... Run away! Okay, the scout can see me now though so they can still chase after me hopefully they won't i'm pretty sure a horse would still be able to chase me down and kill me so we might be about to lose our warrior there did a little bit more damage to me than i was expecting them to but that's okay now we need to go ahead and buy a builder and let's start work on the granary and we'll have the builder come out and work on this rice in the next turn that'll help rome grow a lot faster let's have the scout fortify for a second since they are a little bit low on health speaking of how easy it is to lose scouts. Don't want that to happen. Almost to the end of our first episode here. We are three turns away from both our next civic technology. Okay, good. It looks like we did maybe get away from one of the horseman units. Okay, we might have gotten away. Let's see what happens here. I'll play through this turn because I want to see if we can get that warrior home. Hey, it's Tamiris. <laughs> that mood swing always gets me. All right, it's an honor to meet you. Exchanging information on our capitals is a great idea. So now we know where her capital is, or do we? Oh, there it is. Pokrovka. It's all the way down here. Way to the south. All right, let's indeed go to the next turn and see if this warrior will survive. That'll be a great triumphant note or horrible tragedy on which to end this episode. Hmm. I think if I move my slinger out here... The movement cost for this tile is two. But sometimes, I don't know, it, you get a movement bonus crossing rivers when you have a city that you're moving a unit out of, but I don't think it would apply there, so I wouldn't be able to fire with my slinger. I really wish that I could. All right, we're going to have the warrior cross the river. We'll have the builder come back inside for now. Let's go through a few more things. I guess I will see if maybe... Yeah, it was worth trying. They can't kill that slinger, especially with a uh, horseman in that poor health. But I can at least take a few more looks around here. And on that note, I will stop this first episode here. Next episode will be out in two days. We're going to be doing every other day for the next little while. 10 a.m. Eastern time is the release time for these episodes. So stick around for the next episode of Glory of Rome 2. Thanks so much for watching. Comments are always welcome. It's great to be back. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'll see you next time.